So what we're going to talk about today is how to do a cave. Now, there's a couple very strategic things that you guys should kind of consider about this. And I've discussed this with a few people, but um, <clears throat> you've got a couple ways to do this. Number one, you can just do the cave like I'm going to show you today, where you move into a cave and then when you get through the cave, you come out on the other side. The problem with that is that all of a sudden your map is huge. And if you've got water around it or lots of trees, you start to run into memory and frame rate issues. If your terrain is simple enough and uh, you don't have to worry too much about it, then you don't need to worry about that. But if you are having problems, then the best thing to do is set it up so that you walk into the cave, you go a little bit down the cave, and then you get transported to a new scene. And so it loads the second scene, and then the second scene is in the cave, and then maybe you get through the cave, and at the end of the cave, as you're just about to walk out, you then get transported to a third scene. So you can break these things up into multiple scenes so that it saves the memory and you don't run into frame rate issues. And then that way you don't have to have water everywhere. You only have to worry about water right in front of the cave in the second scene because you're walking up and then when you hit that, you get transported into the third scene. So there's ways of breaking it up, but let's just assume that you're gonna do it like normal. You're gonna walk into a cave, whatever. When you're talking about doing caves, <clears throat> There are a couple different ways that you can do this. One person suggested to me, take a terrain and you kind of make it like a C, like a, like a semicircle. Take another terrain, rotate it upside down, make another semicircle, and you've got, a, you've got a terrain. And I suppose that would work, actually. The problem with that is you might, you probably not, but more likely than not, you'd have like this weird seam where the two of them connected because no matter what you did, the textures would probably not ever match up perfectly. You might be able to get it to match up really well, but you probably wouldn't. So my solution that seemed to work really well last year, um, but again, this is not the only way to do it, is to use Blender and to use two terrains to get you a cave. So let's take a look at what we got here. I've got this terrain set up and I've got it surrounded by water. Um, so I just turn that on really quickly so you can see it. So there was water here, okay? And I do believe the water moved on me. There, now the water is where it's supposed to be. That's kind of, oh, I think maybe it's just a highlight. So, so that's what the water looks like right there. That's what my, um, my terrain looks like. And so let's just say what we want is we're gonna have this your character's gonna start over here, and then right over here, we're gonna have mountains and a cave going underneath the mountains, okay? The mistake <clears throat> that you don't wanna try doing is putting the cave and the mountains in the same terrain. The reason for this being you can't punch a hole into Unity's terrains. Doesn't work. So because you can't rip open a hole in the terrain, you have to take advantage of two terrains and make a hole. So here's what we're going to do. So we've got this terrain here, and so I'm just going to go and add another terrain, just like this. Boom, there we go. And it's, it's under there, so we're going to move it over uh, in the y-axis, or not the y-axis, I'm sorry, the z-axis in a thousand. There we go. And so now I've got this new terrain and it's right there. Now the old terrain that I had is a thousand by a thousand. So I'm gonna click on my new terrain here. I'm gonna make that a thousand by a thousand as well. So that they are going to match up just like that. Now that's going to really kill my water, but you know what? It's not gonna matter because we're gonna make this very mountainous. You're not gonna be able to see behind it. And when you go into the cave, you're not going in my in this instance you're not going to come out on the other side now i do have a game where i did that and i'm having frame lag issues okay and i'll show you that one in a second um, and uh, I, I don't think that's actually the right way to do it so if you're going to go into a cave 
and you're going to come out the other side into a different terrain, that's where you want to start dividing them up into scenes. And you can use the same objects multiple times. So if you build the cave in Blender, you can have it in scene one and scene two. And then you just have your character transported from scene one to scene two when they reach a certain spot. We use the code for that, and it's simple. Okay? So there's a lot of things you can do there. So now what I just need to do is I need to match up my terrain in such a way so that this makes, uh, makes sense. So first things first is I'm going to take and I'm going to make some mountains um, with some of this. Uh, apparently, I need to, yep, there we go. Okay. So let's just bring up some mountains. My, my opacity is all the way up and it's still. There we go. So now we can start bringing up the mountains. And um, let me make sure that my terrain, the, yep, the y axes are all the same. Okay. So now I'm just going to um, bring up the mountains here along here. And I don't even really need them all. Oh, I just need them in the front, right? So we're just going to bring up some mountains here like this. And, and where, right here, where it started to come up there away from the other train, I do not want that right here because if your character were able to go in the water, they would see that. And then theoretically, if they were to walk down along the floor, they could then fall through that hole. So we're going to close that with the brush size. <clears throat> and you just want to make sure that you are getting rid of any, you don't want any gaps between the terrains. So what I find is whenever you're matching them, um, one of the things that you can also do is, let's say when I get here, I'm going to want to match this height level here. I can measure it with this tool, with the uh, paint height, and it will give me the height. And then I can go back and paint the other, the other terrain the same way. But let's just finish this first. So just get some more mountains here um, so that my character can see, uh, can't see beyond them. That's really what we're looking for, is we don't want the character to see beyond the mountains. And then we also need to make sure that the cave, now the big problem is, some of you, have, no one said anything about this, but what about the water? Well, that's going to be an issue too, because we don't want our character to go through the water and then go underwater in the cave. So we're going to have to be very careful about this. We're going to delete the water around that area. Um, and then we'll go from there. So that's pretty good for now. So now we've got, we've got our mountains. It kind of looks like it's an extension of this terrain. So now what we need to do is we need to get this level here. <clears throat> and we're actually, we're going to bring it up. So let me spin around here. And now this is where I'm actually going to bring up the terrain like this, like that. Okay, and now I, I do have a gap, but we need that gap because that gap is where our cave is going to be. Okay, so we've got this gap here, and we're going to use it. We're going to use it to our advantage. But what we really need to do now <clears throat> is close up any other gaps that are here. So I'm going to get a smaller brush. I'm going to go down along the border here with the shift key and just make sure that that's flat all the way down along here like this. right along the seam. So now we don't have anything where my character might be able to fall through. Where we've got gaps here, we're going to use the cave that we build in Blender to kind of get around that. So now let me just uh, go into our water here, um, wowzers, and I can just take, so we've got a little water there and we've got one here. So this is actually really bad because the split right here is is not very conducive to what we need. So maybe I would change, so I'm going to delete that water there, and I'm going to alter my, uh, I'm going to alter my terrain a little bit so that my cave and everything meets here. So you want to be strategic about that sort of a thing. Um, so I'm going to click on this one, and uh, <clears throat> let's go here to, whoops, wrong one, to the paint height. Shift key, and I'm just going to build that 
slightly bigger brush size. Build this up here in the middle. Okay, so it's, it's the same size where I want it, like this. Okay, see that? And then I'll probably um, get rid of it and have it go down here where I want it to go in the water. So go here like that and bring that down. And then I also probably, oh, I definitely want it here like this to go, because this water kind of went all the way through. So I'm going to bring it all the way up here like this. And then we'll just kind of alter the terrain a little bit there like that. Yeah, there's a little smidge there, so we'll bring that back up, make a little hill there, something like that. So now we've kind of changed our terrain a little bit, but it was wor it's worth the work because now we, we know where we're going to match it up and where we can strategically put our water and have our um, cave allow us to kind of go in. Um, and so now I can go back to this terrain, and this is where it's cool, if I go to this Gentlemen, if I go to this here, I can see this number, 76.616. I'm going to take it, control C and copy it, click on my other terrain, go back here. It's the same. Cool. But I'm going to paste it anyway. And now I can go and I can paint it, and it should match up pretty darn well with the terrain that I've got here if I want the two plateaus to be to, at the same place. Um, like that. So we'll have some gaps there, but that's okay. Let's bring that up a little higher there, because this is where our cave is going to be. Okay, so it's not perfect, but guess what? We're going to move on. So now that we've got this, I need to move into Blender. So let's fire up Blender really quickly. <coughs> and I'm going to start making a cave. So once I have this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my cube. So X to delete, Shift A, or go down to the Add menu, and I'm going to add myself um, a cylinder. It's usually the easiest way to start. Um, tab in Edit Mode, and then what I'll do is I'm going to rotate it, holding the Control key down allows it to snap to 5 degree increments. So I just rotated it 90 degrees, nice and easy. I'm going to switch to face select mode, and I'm going to select just the face here, and I'm going to hit the X key, and then I'm going to choose to delete only faces. And what that does is it opens it up. I'm going to do the same thing over here, X delete only faces. So now I've got an open cylinder. This is one of those places where we're going to build a paper thin object kind of, sort of, on purpose, okay? <clears throat> so now I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to do some loop cuts and some slides. So I'm going to take loop cut, boom, bring a loop cut in there, do another loop cut here. I can select entire bands of uh, points by holding the Alt key down and right-clicking in between two points, and it allows me to select, and I can start to stretch this. So I'm going to hit A key to select all, and I'm going to scale this puppy up. Okay, so we're now now we're starting. We're just I mean we're just getting started really. Scale it up a little bit more. That's probably pretty good diameter. And now I can do a whole bunch of loop cuts to allow me to kind of build some uh, variability in it. And now it's just literally going to be like making it look kind of, uh, you know, not man-made. So my first, my first thing is to like start pulling pieces down, grabbing pieces up. I can also do like rows this way, so let me undo that. So if I hit Alt and I right click here, it's going to bring, I can bring up whole rows to kind of make it flatter along the bottom. But again, I want it to look natural, so I'm not you know, uh, I'm not going to worry about it being perfectly even. I actually am then going to start like grabbing pieces and bringing them up, and bring that one down, and then bringing that up, and so on and so forth. Again, to just start looking at it. You can also grab whole cross sections like this, and then hit the S key, 
and that will allow you to scale things. Whoops, alt, alt. So you can create like bigger rooms and, and, and more changes. So we're just going to keep going. But first, I want to kind of see what the scale of this thing is looking like. So I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go to, um, <clears throat> let's see, where is that? There it is. And I'm going to find my game, uh, Game Design Project 1617, Assets, My Assets. And I'm going to make a new folder, which is this button right up here. And I'm going to say Cave. OK, there we go. Double click, go in here, and I'm going to just call it Cave and save it. Whoops. What did I? Oh, I hate it when it does that. OK, sorry. I hit Return twice, and yeah, anyway. Assets, My Assets, Cave, and Save Blender File. So now that that's there, I can minimize this. We're going to go in here, and you see it's importing it already. So in My Assets, there's a cave. And I can take this cave, and I can just drag it out here. Okay. Well, that's because it was really close to the camera. So now you can kind of see a couple of things. First off, the normals are screwed up so that we're, we're, it's transparent on the inside and solid on the outside. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is also really, really small. So <clears throat> I'm going to um, rotate it a little bit here and then move it right here. And so from now on, I want to keep that front piece where it is. So next, I'm going to go back into Blender. I'm going to hit the A key, and I'm going to scale everything up again. Save it. Go back into Unity. And now I can kind of see where, where it's at. That's starting to look a little bit better. That's a good size cave right there. You'll see that I'm going to have to adjust my terrain because it's going through my terrain. Now, you might not think, well, who cares? The character's not going to see it. Well, yeah, they are, because the train's going to be coming through the ceiling of the cave, right? So you've got to be really careful about stuff like that. But now, I can start to play with different things. First off, we need to, we need to flip our normals so that it's not transparent from the inside. So we go back here, go to my Mesh menu, take my normals, and we're going to flip them. So now, they're going to be solid on the inside, not on the outside. So save again. Go back into Unity, and now you can see that we can't see the top, but we can see from inside it looks pretty darn good. So now we're getting there. And this is literally what I'll do. Now the next thing is we need to come up with the front face of the cave so that it blends into our mountains. So I'm going to take my front section here, I'm going to hit the E key to extrude it, left click, and I'm going to hit the S key to scale out, just a little bit like that. Control-S to save, flip back to Unity. Now you can see how it's starting to, to work. So then I might hit the E key again, left click, bring it back. Save, go back into Unity, and now I can have it start coming back into the, uh, uh, the mountains. And now what I might do is bring this side to the left. So I'm going to take... Um, these. Now, I'm going to show you a new technique for selecting things. It's really, really hard to just sit there and hold the Shift key down and click, right? It's really annoying. So, hit the C key. It gives you a little paintbrush. And you can just sit there and paint. You right-click to stop painting. I'll take questions in a second. Um, and now, I can just take this whole side and stretch it over like this. OK, save, go back, there we go. And now what I can do is I can bring this part of the terrain down a little bit so that it melds into the, second ter or the first terrain, and we can start working on it. This, then this, t this terrain here, I can dip it down a little bit too so that it blends with the mouth of the cave a little bit better. So it literally is this flipping back and forth process. By the way, Alt-Tab flips you back and forth between programs, or Windows-Tab allows you to choose whatever window you need to work in. So there's some nice keystrokes that are involved here that allow you to go back and forth really fast. Um, <clears throat> the hardest part, to be completely honest with you, is sitting here in Unity, using the middle, the middle wheel button to scroll and dolly, then flipping into 
Unity and remembering to use the right click button to dolly, then going back to Blender, and then the first thing I usually do is use the right click to, to, to dolly, and then I start doing this. Ah, and it's really, really annoying. Okay? So now you get the sense. Now I'm just going to, oops, wrong button. I was not on the Alt key, I was on the Windows key. So I hit the Windows or the Alt key here, and I can just hit the E key to extrude, bring back another section, scale it up, and I can just keep working until. I want to do, you know, until I'm done my cave. If I want to create like a side cave, like a, you know, like a spur that goes off to the side, that's actually really simple. What I'll do is I'll just prepare it with a couple loop cuts, depending upon how big I want it to be. And then I'm just going to take the area that I want to have start. I'm going to take those vertices here and I'm going to hit the X key and just delete those vertices. I've created a hole. You could actually you could extrude. You could just extrude these faces out. Actually, that would might even be easier. But what I like to do, that's a good that's a good point. You could just select the faces like this, okay? And hit the E key and extrude them out. See? However, what I like better about doing that is by deleting the vertices in the middle, it allows me to get rid of the rectangular shape a little bit before I do some extrusions. So I'll delete, then I'll take these and I'll start moving them sideways to create a little bit of a rounder shape. And then that way, every time I extrude, um, it's got a better shape. Because I'm all about less work, right? I mean, you know, who isn't? And so having to do this with one set of vertices is hard enough. But doing them with two sets, because now you've extruded, that's even worse. So I'll just do this. Y'all get the idea. And then I'll take them and alt click, and it goes all the way around. And then extrude, left click, and then bring that out. Okay? It's not perfect, but you get the idea. And then I can scale it down. E to extrude again. And you can, you can also uh, rotate selections. So I can go to the rotate tool, and I can rotate it down a little bit like this then move it down like that and have it look like it's going uh, downhill even more. Another really fast way of moving is I can rotate around axes. So I know I'm on the x-axis here. So I'll extrude, bring it out, bring it down, and then I'll hit R and then X. And it allows me to rotate it around the x-axis without actually ever changing the tool. So once you start learning keystrokes and you start learning how Blender works, it starts getting really, really fast. So eventually what I'll do is I'll just extrude, come down, and I'll start scaling it down. Extrude, out, scale it down. And then, here's a new one, Alt-M. Alt-M merges all the points that you've selected into one at the center. And so now I've closed off my cave. Now it looks a little sharp right here, but if I go and put my modifiers on it and do a subdivision surface, now all of a sudden it's looking a little bit better. Okay? I still need to kind of play with parts of the walls and stuff like that to make it look more regular, but at the same time, that's not too shabby. And I do the same thing here, loop cut and slide out front. Then take a couple of these, bring them forward, bring them back, bring them forward, you know, bring the edges of the cave forward in places. You want to make it look like it's natural. You don't want it to look like it's man-made, right? So you kind of have to, you actually have to work harder sometimes to make things look like they're natural uh, than, say, like a building or something like that. Because, you know, everything straight lines in, in CG is very easy, but when you're doing you know, uh, natural stuff that's organic, it's a lot harder to kind of make things look the right way. But now you can start seeing it starting to look organic. Save. Once it gets this big, sometimes it takes a little while to get into Unity. <clears throat> Who knows, I may have just even crashed it. Oh, there it goes. Nope, it does it. So the subdivision surface, by the way, you can see how infinitely complicated it makes, more complicated it makes the uh, 
the object and may cause frame rate issues. I've got some workarounds on that that I can show you later on, including not using the subdivision surface, but actually there's a smoothing feature when you're working in vertices. You can click a smooth button, but you do that at the very end. So if you see that button, don't do it until you've got your shape down a lot more because it can really wreck. Uh, on the other thing to stay away from is the subdivide button. Don't use subdivide. Um, that usually creates too many vertices. Loop cuts and slides. If you need more vertices, loop cuts and slides. Just trust me on that. Nine times out of ten, you need a loop cut and a slide. You do not need a subdivision. Subdivision causes all sorts of problems, especially with the caves. I, it's just and, and let me show you one other thing about subdivision. So let's say I grab a face here, and I've got a face selected, and I, and I do a subdivide. Notice it created points here, 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 and here, and yet it did not connect those points to other vertices. And so it changed, see how it's kind of going up in a triangle here like this? It changed the way the edge looks because, because of the way the subdivision works. You see how it kind of creates this weird curve here on the edge? Because it created a vertice here, but then it didn't actually connect it to anything. And if that happens, I mean, I can do that. I'll, I'll go and I'll click, on, um, I'll click on the face. I'll delete the face. Then I'll go click back on the points, and I can fill the points specifically. So I'll click, I'll link that, I'll link those three, and I'll hit the F key and refill it. Okay, so that's it. I mean, you can, you can work around that, but it's so tedious. Don't do that to yourself. Use loop cuts and slides, because now, again, I've got points here and points here that have, literally have nothing that they're going to and it can create odd textures and odd ways that the faces move. So it's just generally not considered a good idea to use subdivide, especially on selections. If you're using it on the whole thing, that's one thing. But then, when you subdivide, if you have the whole thing selected, you just double the number of vertices. And you probably don't want to do that either. So just trust me on this. Stick with loop cuts and slides um, and, and you know, do that that way. So it's, it's a process, but if any of you want to do a cave or anything similar to this, you can do that. Um, and then, now what will happen right now, let's say I put, I mean, do I have, I have a character. So let, let's, let's take my character here and we'll show you something. This isn't going to work very well. Um, so if I go here, oh dear. Yeah, never mind. Um, where's my first person controller? There we go. Um, if, if, I, if I take my first person, oh, I made him fly. I think I grabbed the uh, blue arrow instead of the yellow arrow. There we go. Hopefully that'll be good. So now if I play with this, <coughs> um, if I walk into my cave, guess what? I'm going to fall right through it. That's unfortunate. Well, because we haven't set up the colliders yet. And so it's easy to put a collider on there. OK? And you also can kind of, you also want to test this. So there, I just fell, and see, I fall right through it. And the reason for that is because I don't have a mesh collider on there. And we'll, we'll talk about colliders in, a, in of actually next week, probably sometime, we're going to talk about colliders. Um, but when you test it, just walk your character up to the cave, and, or, or if it's your building, same thing. Walk them up to the building, test the scale, but realize you're going to be able to walk through it, okay? Because right now, Unity is not calculating a collider for the mesh object that you're putting into it with, with, the, uh, with Blender. We have to add that to the object, and I'll show you how we do that later. Does anybody have any questions? I know it's a lot of information in a ver very short period of time. Let me just summarize really quickly. A, you can't punch holes in unity terrain. So in order to do a cave that goes under a terrain, you have got to use two terrains and utilize a difference in the terrain, a tear. If you're going to do that, you then need to build a front face to your cave that will help disguise the fact that the two terrains do not match up. You can also use that uh, select specific height. You can copy the height from one terrain to the next. And as long as the terrains are sitting on the same height at their base, 
you'll be able to set them so that they match up. It takes a little bit of work. You also may want to overlap your terrains by one. So um, this is something I didn't mention, but if I take terrain two, instead of 1,000, I may move it to 999. And they'll be overlapping by literally one unit. That sometimes helps the mesh of the two terrains. The problem with that is sometimes if they're not perfect, you'll see them meshing and it can be really bad. So you're probably better off at just doing, um, staying at 1,000, okay? Uh, and then the other thing is water. Make sure that your water is not in the way and make sure your terrain goes up and over the cave in the, in the best way. Um, with your houses, kind of similar rules, um, but a little simpler as far in the execution. Okay, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. We got it? All right, let's get to work.